porosimetry, uh, unlike barometry, can provide information about blind pores as well as roughness or surface area of a material. So there's methods such as gas absorption or mercury intrusion. Uh, today we'll talk about gas sorption experiments. So gas sorption experiments work by a process called fizzysorption. So fizzysorption or physical adsorption is a reversible process. And that's the process by which gas molecules are adsorbed onto the surface of a solid. It relies on weak, for, weak attractive forces, van der Waals forces uh, for those chemists out there. And it's reversible. So it's a non-specific method and we can use it to form multiple stacking layers on top of the surface of a material. And that is the principle behind uh, the gas sorption measurements or gas porosimetry. So how does, what is gas sorption? What's the process look like? So in the gas sorption experiment, we wanna start, we take our porous material, we wanna clean it. We can't just go in with a toothbrush and scrub it clean. Uh, in this case, we have to degas our sample. So typically what we do is we heat up our sample uh, under vacuum and that will pull out all the air, moisture, whatever is inside the pores of a material as well as on the surface of the material. Then we take our porous material and we dose it with that adsorbing gas. Uh, sometimes we use nitrogen, sometimes we use argon. Choice of gas is gonna be dependent on your particular application. But we dose it with gas. So the gas molecules are now starting to, as we increase gas pressure, gas molecules are starting to slowly stick to the surface of the molecule, you can see that here. And it's gonna form a really thin monolayer first. Uh, at this point, we can use BET theory to estimate the surface area of a sample. Uh, we, can, we can estimate the number of molecules basically that's required to cover the surface of the sample. Now, we can keep going if we want more than just surface area information. So we can keep adding more gas. We add more gas pressure. And as we're adding more gas, we're stacking multiple layers on top of each other. We're filling up uh, pores and so on. And so the measurement that we're taking is adsorbed gas volume as a function of gas pressure. And so this data is what we call an isotherm. And we can use it, uh, we can take our isotherm and convert it to a pore size distribution. At some point, we'll add so much gas that the system is completely saturated. And that's when we get total pore volume filling. So we know the temperature of the system typically. We're running it at the boiling point of whatever this gas is. We know what the gas is, so we know its density, and we know what the pressure is. So we know PV equals NRT. Uh, we can calculate the volume that the gas occupies, and from there we get the total pore volume. What we can do is we can also reverse this process to get the desorption isotherm. So this step, this process here is the adsorption isotherm, but if we reverse it, we get the desorption isotherm. And typically this has a hysteresis behavior to it. 